assalamu alaikum students uh, and welcome to the lecture number 12 of good mechanics 2 course and in this lecture we will be talking about the category, uh, categories of compressible flow so in the last lecture we uh, derived an expression for the speed of sound and we discussed the mach number and in the mach number we said that uh, this tells us about how much the fluid is compressed and uh, the mach number as you remember is a ratio of two speeds one is the speed of an object uh, that is traveling in a, some fluid and the other is the speed of the sound in that fluid so uh, as we said that the compressibility effects are more important at higher Mach numbers and today we are going to see that that what happens uh, to a certain fluid when a body that is flowing in that fluid exceeds that uh, Mach number uh, that exceeds the speed of sound and uh, what will be the effects of that so um, let's take a scenario and uh, in that scenario what we are going to do we are going to uh, take a pressure pulse from a point source uh, this is our point source this right here is a point source and these are the pressure pulses that uh, this uh, point source generates and uh, let's say that and this is the pressure uh, pulse that the point source generates at time t is equal to 0 seconds and this is the uh, pressure pulse that this uh, point source generated at time t is equal to 1 second and this is the pressure pulse that uh, the point source generated at time t is equal to 2 seconds so uh, in this scenario the point source is stationary and it generates uh, a certain amount of pressure pulses weak pressure pulses and these uh, pressure pulses as you can see are spherical and they expand radially outwards they expand radially outwards and the uh, if we take an observer uh, and places place uh, him anywhere in this pressure in this pressure field uh, he will uh, hear uh, a sound of equal frequency if uh, we place him here let's say his position is one and then we place him here at position 2 so the frequency of the sound that he is hearing will not change in this scenario because in this scenario the point source is stationary and it generates a certain amount of pressure pulses or uh, you can also say that it, generate, it is generating a sound and we are taking that sound in terms of the pressure pulses so because we already discussed that the sound is a weak pressure pulse in our initial lectures when we talked about the compressible flows so this is the one scenario this is our scenario a uh, and in this scenario our point source is stationary and it is generating weak pressure pulses so now let's take a scenario in which the pressure pulse uh, uh, a point source sorry a point source is moving uh, to the left uh, in this scenario right here uh, a point source is moving to the left so uh, if this was the point source but this point source is not stationary now and it is moving to these positions that are represented by this sign plus sign so now this point source is not, not stationary and it is moving uh, but how it is moving in this scenario it is moving less than the speed of sound that uh, if the pressure pulses has a definitely will will travel with the speed of sound c but the point source is uh, moving with a speed less than the speed of sound so this condition is very necessary that we have to consider because in this scenario the point source is moving but less than the speed of sound uh, and the point source is moving to the left and when the point source moves to the left with a constant velocity v the wave pattern is no longer symmetrical as you can see the wave pattern is no longer symmetrical as was in this case the wave pattern was symmetrical in this case the wave, wave pattern is not symmetrical but it is trying to converge at this point it is trying to overlap at this point but uh, the point source velocity is less than the speed of sound so it is not overlapping but it is a certain amount it is trying to uh, overlap in this regime right here but it cannot totally overlap because the uh, point source speed is less than the speed of sound so uh, again uh, this is the point source and this wave is the uh, generated at time t is equal to 0 uh, by this point source and then the point source moves to the left with a velocity v and it generates a wave 
and this wave is at time t is equal to 1 second and uh, this is the position of the point source at point at time t is equal to 1 second then the point source moves uh, moves to this position and it generates a wave at time t is equal to 2 seconds and its position is also 2v that represents its position at time t is equal to uh, 2 seconds so Uh, this is uh, how the point source moves to moves to the left and generate a, a pressure pulse but as you can see that the point source is always behind a pressure pulse if we see the overall picture more clearly then you can see that uh, at this position the point source is lagging behind the pressure pulses the all all the pressure pulses Uh, because the velocity of this uh, point source is less than the speed of sound so uh, these are the waves emitted these are the line type that is used for the waves emitted at time t is equal to 0 second the line type used for the waves emitted um, emitted at time t is equal to 1 second and the solid line that represents the waves that are, that are emitted at time t is equal to 2 seconds this represents the point source this cross represents the Uh, point source at time t is equal to zero second, and this plus represents the source. The point source at time t is equal to one, two, and three seconds correspondingly, just like here at uh, point uh, time t is equal to one, two, and three seconds. So this is uh, how the wave pattern becomes unsymmetrical when it moves to the left, but uh, less than the speed of sound. So Uh, this is how the wave patterns will behave now now uh, let's look at the scenario uh, in which the uh, wave uh, the point source will move equal to the speed of the sound so what will be the wave pattern in that case so this will be the uh, case right here again that uh, this is the point source uh, at time t is equal to 0 seconds and this is the a uh, pressure pulse that it generated at time t is equal to 0 seconds this point source can moves to the left with the speed of the sound v is equal to c uh, and it generates a pressure pulse and this pressure pulse represents represented here at time t is equal to 1 second then it moves further away uh, and it generates a pressure pulse at time t is equal to 2 seconds uh, and similarly the position of this point source at time t is equal to 0 seconds then at time t is equal to 1 second and time t is equal to 2 seconds now you can see that as this uh, point source is moving at the speed of sound then it converges it overlaps at a certain point they are overlaps at the certain point and it does not lag behind the pressure pulse if you can see right here this is the uh, point source that is that was moving at the speed of sound and all the Uh, wave all the pressure pulses or the pressure waves are now overlapping at this one specific point because now the point source is moving at the speed of sound so mm, what happens now uh, if we take an observer and place him here he will hear nothing but if is uh, if the observer is placed right here he will hear a certain amount of sound with different frequency different frequencies than the one generated at the point source but this is due to the tangent plane the mark wave that uh, this scenario generates it it is a tangent plane it is a tangent uh, it is a line that is tangent to these uh, pressure pul pulses and it generate two zones one is the zone of silence and one is the zone of action in the zone of silence the observer will hear nothing and in the zone of action the observer will Here a sound that will be different from the frequency that is being generated at the uh, point source. So uh, this is due to the uh, scenario in which the uh, point source, the source that is generating these pressure pulses, is moving equal to the speed of sound. And whenever, if we also take that in terms of a ratio, then v over c will be equal to one. And when whenever v is equal to v over c is equal to one, the flow is sonic. the flow is sonic in this case uh, pressure waves are not uh, present ahead of the moving point source as you can see right here there are no pressure waves ahead of this moving point source as well, uh, as compared to this scenario there were there were pressure waves ahead of this moving point source so because here the uh, velocity was less than the speed of sound but here there are no pressure waves ahead of this moving point source so 
uh, you will not hear anything if you are positioned to the left you will not hear anything if you are positioned in the zone of silence uh, for flow uh, for flow moving past a stationary uh, the pressure waves are all tangent to the plane and they pass through the point source uh, again the pressure waves are all tangent to this line and they pass to this through this single point source so in this scenario uh, we had a scenario in which the point source was moving at the speed of sound and now we have this condition so now uh, let's move on and look at the scenario in which the point source will be greater than the speed of sound so what will happen in this case so let's move on and look at that now this is the scenario in which v is greater than the speed of sound the speed of the point source is greater than the speed of sound and in this scenario the flow will be supersonic the flow will be supersonic and uh, a mark cone is constructed uh, in this scenario a cone right here as you can see a cone is constructed because of the positioning of the uh, point source that is ahead of the pressure waves now uh, in the previous two scenarios the point source was in one case lagging behind the pressure wave uh, in uh, that was v is less than c then v is equal to c at this scenario the point source was overlapping the pressure wave and now in this scenario the point source is ahead of the pressure wave so this was this is the scenario in which the point source has a velocity that is greater than the speed of sound so that is the supersonic regime and in that scenario you also hear a sonic boom which we will discuss in the next slide that how does that happen so now uh, due to this the mark cone is generated in this scenario we had a tangent tangent uh, to the uh, uh, pressure pulses a tangent line that was uh, tangent to the pressure pulses and uh, in this scenario now we have velocity that is greater than the speed of the sound so uh, if this was the point source this was the pressure pulse generated at time t is equal to 0 this was the pressure pulse generated at time t is equal to 1 this is the pressure pulse generated at time t is equal to 2 seconds but as you can see that at this position now there are there is the uh, this is the point source and it is ahead of these pressure pulses that's why the cone a certain amount of cone that is generated and this cone as you can see the lines of these cones is tangent to these pressure pulses at these points and they all converge at this point source that is moving uh, that is moving at a speed greater than the speed of sound so uh, in this scenario the air right here the fluid right here is compressed the fluid right here in this regime will be compressed very highly and whenever the point source moves ahead uh, it generates a sound it generates a sound and we call that a sonic boom so whenever uh, we have this scenario and a mark cone is generated then we hear a sonic boom because in this scenario the point source moves uh, greater than the speed of sound uh, so that's why we hear a sonic boom and based on these discussions that we just had we recognize these three regions uh, based on the mark number so in the first scenario in which the flow was nearly symmetrical uh, and the point source was stationary we had a mark number that was uh, less than or equal to 0 0.3 mm, it was uh, unrestricted the flow that was nearly symmetrical and instantaneous pressure communication was possible that whenever we were placed in the pressure field we we heard a sound that has the same frequency as the point source then we had an other regime that was uh, between 0 0.3 and 1 and uh, in this scenario the flow was uh, not symmetrical but it was asymmetric and uh, by asymmetric pressure communication we mean that the sound that we heard uh, in that uh, pressure uh, uh, gradient or in that pressure uh, region it was not equal to the frequency that was generated at the point source and then uh, but in that scenario the flow was compressible and subsonic flow or sonic if the mach number was one but 
uh, in compressible supersonic flow where the Mach number was greater than or equal than one, the formation of Mach waves were uh, were witnessed and pressure communication restricted to a zone of action uh, that we only heard a sound whenever we were inside the zone of action. In the previous slide, the zone of action lied uh, on the right side of that uh, tangent line, and in this scenario the pressure the zone of action lies within this cone so if we are in this cone we will hear a sound if you are inside this cone we will hear a sound but if you are outside this cone we will hear nothing so this is the effect of the Mach number and uh, that is also due to the compressibility effects that is generated whenever an object moves uh, at the speed of sound or greater than the speed of sound so it generally compresses the air around it and if the Mach number is equal to 1 then it generates a uh, pressure field and on the on the right hand side of this pressure field where the waves overlaps with, with this tangent uh, wave right here there is a right hand side a left hand side and if you are placed on the left hand side you will hear nothing and on the right hand side you will here something because the waves are all compressed on this side but if a flow is greater than Mach number one then a cone is generated because the point source is moving ahead of the pressure pulses that are generated so a cone is generated and inside this cone the air is highly compressed or which, whichever fluid you are talking about then Mm, what happens is if you are outside this cone you will hear nothing and if you are inside this cone you will hear uh, something so this is the uh, categories of uh, compressible flows that we recognize uh, based on the Mach number and now you can have a certain amount of idea that why we use Mach number because it tells us about the compressibility of the flow in which the uh, so on which an object is traveling and if we uh, see then we have a transonic flows and the regime of the transonic flows lies between 0 0.9 and 1.2 then we have hypersonic flows also in which the Mach number is greater than 5 so if we apply a little bit of trigonometry on this cone and if we take this as a triangle like this and if you say that on the the perpendicular right here is uh, c that is the speed of sound and the horizontal is v that is the speed of an object and this if you take sine of this uh, angle alpha then sine alpha is equal to c over v that is equal to 1 over the mac number so this scenario is only applicable when we have this scenario that the speed of the object is greater than the speed of sound Now uh, let's look at these uh, three scenarios in which the speed of the jet is less than the speed of the sound, speed of the jet is equal to the speed of sound and speed of the jet is greater than the sp speed of sound. So uh, in these three scenarios you can see that the uh, this point right here, this point right here uh, at the subsonic speed uh, is lagging behind these pressure waves that are generated. And uh, at this mark number one, uh, the uh, pressure waves and the jet actually overlaps at this point. They all overlap at this point and if we draw tangent, then we uh, have two regimes. One is the regime of action in which uh, you will hear some sound and on the left hand side, you will not hear anything. And uh, in another scenario in which the speed of the jet is uh, greater than the speed of the sound then it generates a shock cone or we can also call this a mark cone we can also call this a mark cone and inside this mark cone you will hear the sound outside this mark cone you will hear nothing so uh, this is how the mark cone is generated and, uh, and the, at that position the uh, jet now breaks the sound barrier because it has a velocity greater than the speed of sound it breaks the sound barrier and a uh, sound is generated that we call this sonic boom uh, and this is the actual picture of that sonic boom and you can now see that 
this is also in the shape of a cone this is also in the shape of a cone so you can see that the fluid right here in this regime is very highly compressed because of this speed of the jet that is greater than the speed of sound so now you can actually relate to the Mach number and the compressibility effects that it uh, talks about or we take certain scenarios in which the compressibility effects are very dominant and uh, that was that scenario the supersonic speed and the regime in which the Mach number was equal to 1. So now let's talk about the isentropic flows. and uh, the isentropic flows as you know have constant entropy and we study these flows in the perspective of the compressible flows and say that the flow is compressible but it is also isentropic uh, in that uh, condition we will say that the flow is adiabatic adiabatic and it is frictionless so uh, if we take these two conditions then we can say that our compressible flow is isentropic and now for that isentropic flow we are going to take certain conditions and derive a few equations to see that what happens when a compressible flow uh, flows through a diverging section or a converging section and what will be the uh, conditions regarding these two geometries uh, when we talk about compressible flows because this is what we are interested in now and the main uh, topic that we are going to cover this is under the isentropic flows and now we are going to talk about the uh, flow effect of flow uh, on the uh, cross-sectional area and as we are already talking about the compressible flows and we studied a certain amount a certain dimensionless number that was the Mach number and we said that the Mach number was equal to the local speed of an object divided by the local speed of sound and we said that this is related to the uh, compressibility effects of the fluid that actually the Mach number tells us how much the fluid is uh, getting compressed whenever it flows so and this is uh, the one dimensionless number that is related to the compressibility of the fluid and now we are going to see that let's say if a flow is compressible uh, and whenever the flow is compressible we identified its regime in the previous slide uh, we identified certain Mach numbers regime in the previous slide in which we said that the fluid will be compressible in that scenarios and let's say now in this section we will assume that the flow is compressible and it is moving through a certain uh, geometry so what will happen to that flow if it is compressible it have if it has a certain amount of mark number so uh, whenever we talk about flow through a certain uh, area a certain cross-sectional area we take the continuity equation uh, because we say that overall the mass is conserved and the mass flow rate in this case will be the rho a and v and it will be a constant so uh, let's take the logarithmic form of this equation on both sides and we can write this mass flow rate in terms of natural log of density, area and velocity that will all be equal to a constant. Further, uh, we can also uh, differentiate these terms and write them in terms of these equations and arrange it like this. And then again, uh, what we will do, we will take the Newton's second law uh, uh, which was applied to an inviscid frictionless and steady flow uh, of a fluid particle because we already did said that the isentropic flow will be a frictionless flow it will be an adiabatic flow so in the streamwise direction the result uh, of equation 3.5 that we derived this is equation 3.5 for other compressible or incompressible flows is uh, this this is our uh, the term that we got when we were deriving our Bernoulli's equation and Bernoulli's equation is also we said that is the equation of motion for a fluid so uh, we are talking about continuity and we are talking about uh, the continuity of a flow that is uh, 
uh, actually conserved so we will uh, apply this Bernoulli equation and since we are talking about compressible flow so we will neglect this term this uh, potential energy or this elevation term and we will just rearrange these terms like this into this equation and this statement is regard, uh, uh, regarding this equation right here and for steady inviscid flow the sum of certain pressure velocity and elevation effects is constant along the streamline this is the equation that we derived along the streamline so this is how this equation will be arranged and uh, now using this equation further we will derive a term which will be related to the flow across a cross-sectional area and how the different uh, parameters change when we are talking about a certain type of cross-sectional area so now what we will do we will apply combine these two equations that is 11.4 to 11.44 and derive a term that will look like this this is our equ uh, equation 11.42 you are already familiar with uh, that we derive from our Bernoulli's uh, equation by neglecting the elevation term so since the flow is being considered is isentropic the speed of sound is related to the variation of pressure with density by equation 11.34 that we derived repeated here for convenience as this this is the speed of sound related to the pressure and density in the isentropic conditions that, the, that is the term that we derived in the last lecture and we know that our Mach number is equal to the ratio uh, is the ratio of the local speed of uh, an object divided by the local, local speed of sound and then the equation 11.45 if we input these terms because you see that this term is given right here and if this term is equal to c then v of v over c will be equal to the Mach number so we can actually uh, replace this term with the square of the Mach number and write an equation that will look like this so now uh, we will have uh, our equation in terms of a Mach number and it also includes our pressure density velocity and area so now we can look at the uh, change in pressure density velocity and area with respect to the Mach number and we already identified a certain flow regimes that was the subsonic flow regime and a uh, supersonic flow regime in which the Mach number was less than one Mach number was greater than one and now we can actually identify the uh, values of pressure density and area related to these flow regimes that how will we, they, they change uh, so we can get our flow to be a su supersonic or subsonic so now this is an interesting term and we again uh, combine two equations combine two equations in equation 11.42 and equation 11.47 and we derive this equation in which we will see that what happens to a Mach number when we change the area and velocity or what will happen to a Mach number if the velocity and area is changed so now uh, we will um, relate this equation to of uh, geometry and we will see that uh, what will happen to the Mach number so now this is our uh, equation that we derived in the previous slide and before moving to our diagram uh, we will consider uh, that uh, let's say two scenarios in one scenarios we have we have a diverging duct and in the second scenario we have a converging duct and by the diverging duct the area is increasing and in the converging duct the area is decreasing as we move along the flow so uh, if our flow is uh, subsonic and this is what uh, we are deriving from this equation these are the uh, this equations is actually t telling us that what will happen if the flow is subsonic so uh, in subsonic flow the area will increase and the velocity will decrease whenever the flow passes uh, through a diverging duct so we can also say that uh, uh, when the area increases the, uh, the velocity will decrease and the flow will be subsonic flow or for a subsonic flow uh, whenever a subsonic flow flows through a diverging duct the, and in the diverging duct the area is increasing so the velocity of that subsonic flow will uh, decrease similarly for supersonic flow for a supersonic flow 
in which the Mach number is 1 and if that supersonic flow flows through uh, diverging duct then the, as the area is increasing its velocity will also increase. Similarly for a converging duct as the uh, for subsonic flow as the area decreases the velocity will increase and uh, for a supersonic flow if it flows through a converging duct then the uh, area will de de decrease as, as will the velocity. So again just to repeat because uh, we are actually uh, talking about isentropic flows, compressible flows and now we have derived a term that is relating the velocity and area to the Mach number and from the Mach number we uh, had two flow regimes so for one was the subsonic flow regime and again if a subsonic flow flows through a converge, uh, diverging section and the diverging section the area is increasing as we move along in this direction so if the area is in, uh, increasing the velocity will decrease for a subsonic flow but if the flow is supersonic in which the Mach number is greater than 1 uh, and uh, if the supersonic flow move through this ge geometry the in which the area is increasing in this direction the velocity will also increase so now let's talk about the converging duct converging duct and uh, in this scenario for a subsonic scenario the area is increasing uh, decreasing in this direction and the velocity will increase and for a supersonic uh, in which the Mach number is greater than 1 of, uh, for if a supersonic flows uh, pass through the converging duct then the as the area decreases the velocity will also decrease we can further uh, simplify these statements by taking density into the consideration that what happens to the density if a flow is subsonic and the uh, area is increasing and the velocity increasing so how is that related to the density and then uh, see that why the velocity is increasing and see that why the velocity is increasing for these subsonic and supersonic flows whenever they flow through a diverging duct and what happens to the velocity in terms of density as it flows through a converging duct for supersonic and subsonic flow regimes so let's look at that now here to better understand why the subsonic and supersonic duct flows are so different we combine equation point 44 in equation point 48 to find equation point 49 in which now we are relating density to the area uh, and also to the Mach number so this is equation point 44 and again these are the two scenarios that we just discussed so uh, in the subsonic flow from this equation this equation now tells us that in the subsonic flow the density will increase in the direction of the area so as in the subsonic flow the density will increase as the area increases so will be the density and the velocity will increase so now if you talk about our continuity equation it was rho a v so in this scenario if the area is increasing the density will increase and the velocity will increase to compensate for the increment in these two and similarly for supersonic flow uh, it will be the opposite as the area increases the density will decrease the density will decrease so again in this scenario if the density is increasing the the density uh, sorry for a supersonic flow the density will decrease the density will decrease in the uh, direction of the increasing area and now relating these statements to the continuity equation that is m dot is equal to rho a v for a supersonic condition and for a diverging duct for a diverging duct so in this scenario as the area increases uh, so will the velocity and in that scenario the density will in, uh, decrease to compensate for the increment in these two so in supersonic uh, flow scenario that is flowing through a diverging duct the density will uh, decrease uh, the area will increase and the 
velocity will also increase so uh, the if you want to accelerate a supersonic flow you will need a diverging duct and if you want to decelerate a subsonic flow you will actually be needing a diverging duct now let's relate the density to these uh, a converging duct scenario and as the area increase the velocity will increase for a subsonic flow and in this scenario the density will also decrease so the decrease in area and density will be compensated by the increase in velocity uh, so uh, again in this scenario the density will increase the density will increase uh, because it is a subsonic uh, flow supersonic flow regime uh, here it is the supersonic flow regime and again for the uh, converging duct the density will increase the area will decrease and so will the uh, velocity so to compensate for the increase in the density the area and the velocity will decrease to keep this equation in balance keep this equation in balance so these are the relations uh, for the supersonic and the uh, subsonic flow regimes and how they are related to area velocity and density and we also derived certain terms to relate these uh, flows the supersonic flows and the subsonic flows to uh, area velocity and density and how they will change with the change in geometry if you are talking about uh, diverging uh, nozzles or convergent nozzle and let's say if you are talking about convergent and divergent nozzle so uh, you can also see that here the uh, flow is convergent and here the flow is divergent so we also use the convergent and divergent nozzles to uh, see it if we let's say the flow is subsonic and we want to make it uh, increase its uh, accelerated so we will need a divergent uh, portion and to further accelerate that we will converge uh, we will actually diverge that because we saw that if we can achieve a mark number for due to this con uh, convergent portion then we will like to further accelerate it and to further accelerate it we will make our nozzle divergent and this is where we got that idea that a supersonic flow will be accelerated if we increase the area so if you want to accelerate your super your uh, your uh, supersonic flow so you will need a divergent nozzle but for that purpose you will have to have a subsonic you will have to have a subsonic flow first to make it sonic in this region in this divergent region and further accelerate it to supersonic flow in this divergent portion because it will help it uh, help to accelerate it similarly we have convergent uh, we have divergent in this uh, here the flow is convergent then divergent and then it converges so we have a divergent convergent nozzle as well uh, for that scenario to let's say if the flow is uh, supersonic and we need to uh, convert it into subsonic flow so we actually need a divergent portion so you can take these geometries combine it in different configurations and actually make your flow from subsonic to supersonic and from supersonic to uh, subsonic so uh, they can be combined in different configurations and then we can use them in different uh, flow scenarios and in this flow scenario was for compressible flows and also for different mark flow numbers and the mark flows that we were considered was the subsonic flows in which the mark number was less than one and the supersonic flows in which the mark number was greater than one.